So, haven't cooked my steak yet, but with it, I'm gonna do an unboxing also, but talk about the wine I'm gonna have first with my dinner in a little bit, is a Australian Cabernet from Kunawara. They have this red soil down there, they did call it Terra something, I forget the name of exactly. 2018, this one's called The Cigar. I've been looking for Wins Estate, it's the one that I made me fall in love with Kunawara Cab. Never had this one. This is in around that. This is around thirty dollars. I'm hoping, hoping it's good. I just don't know. I've never had this one, so I have it in a decanter right now. I'm gonna do the unboxing and then come back to it. But it's called the Cigar Kunawara 2018. I just added the decanter. It smells very promising. We shall see. So number of wines I've gone from a few different places. And don't even remember exactly where. Doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna go through the wines. So, just been on a real kick this year. If there's a wine or a grape that in the last 12 months I've been gravitating, gravitating to it more than in the past, it's probably Sangiovese. N no real reason except I absolutely goes amazing. I think it goes amazingly with food. It's not overly heavy, but has a savory character. And just a delicious factor, but mostly the savory, herbal, and it just resonates with me right now. It's just one of these wines, one of these grapes that's absolutely resonating with me. So any, a lot of Cantico Classico, uh, Cante Classico Reservas, 2016 vintages. I, I think I talked talk about the Carpanetto. I bet you I got it in here. Found this one today, La Paglia, La Pagliaia, however you pronounce it. Never had this one, $25, $26. Give it a shot. I'm, I'm hoping it's great. So, there's that wine. Been eyeballing this wine for a little bit from a store, and this is Conterno, great producer, and this is the Gattanaro. So this is further north, pretty sure, than Barolo Barbaresco. Actually, it's definitely more north. And this is Nervi, Gattanaro 2016, 100% Nebbiolo. So Nebbiolo grape, different region. I've had a few Gattanaras in the past made from that one producer that's got the funky bottle shape that I can't remember the name of right now, Tra Travaglini, I think. Never had this one, this is about $50, $60, so a pretty expensive Gattanara. It's a good producer, it's probably why, expecting good things, 2016 vintage, so really, really have high hopes for, for this for sure. At Nebroso, so I've, I'm lacking some lighter style bodied reds for my salmon dishes and some other dishes, maybe pork. $20, love this one, just a great staple to have at home. I'm pretty sure I might have bought two of them, maybe a different, ah, I did, I bought a different, oh, that was a 2019, this is a little bit of an older one, not much older, but 2017, up to more, I think this is a few more bucks, $25 for this one. But again, at Nebroso, made from Norella Muscalese grape. I think this goes great with salmon, pork. It certainly could go with other things too, but just specifically those without a doubt. I said it a few minutes ago, Carbonetto, and I believe this wine for $20 is fantastic. This Chianti Classico Reserva 2016, that vintage specifically, I absolutely love. 15 and 16 were great, great vintages out of Chianti. I think the 17 was a little bit lesser when you're if you're going by vintage scores for the region. I, I still think it's it's fantastic and twenty dollars. You really twenty dollar wine here just tastes amazing. And then you talk about these twenty dollar cabs out of Napa Sonoma, and it just gosh, do they fall flat? That absolutely doesn't fall flat. That wine is is terrific. So this wine's called Shatter. And I've probably never spoken about this. Twenty nineteen. It's from France, from Mari, France. I'm pretty sure that's south. France, if I'm not mistaken. It's made from Grenache, so it's from uh, Coke Catalanas, Catalanias, and it's made by an American producer, Joel Gott, and he does it with, uh, I'm sure, a French producer. This is a big wine, 14.9%. I remember absolutely loving this wine. It's in the mid-20s. The last time I had it, I really, really didn't like it, but I saw it again. It's a newer vintage. I haven't had it. Old Vine, Dry Farm, Grenache, I just want to try it again and see if I could start recommending this wine as something a little bit different 
to some people that I know. And I did used to love it. And I used to recommend it. And then I stopped after I had a bad bottle, bottle or two. Could have been a bad vintage. Could have just been a bad bottle or two. It is a bigger version of a Grenache from what I remember. My tastes change. My desires change. You know, Sangiovese, something that's absolutely resonating with me. And Zinfandel's a little bit lesser. Resonating a little less than it used to for me. I still like them. But it is what it is. 2018, uh, 2019 CS, Cabernet Sauv, Substance, Wines of Substance. So, I don't think I've ever really spoken about this, but when you're talking about bargain, like, I was just talking about cash in the $20 range. This is $14 at a Washington State made by Charles Smith or his, his winery. And Charles Smith's an absolute legit winemaker. And this is an absolute legit wine for $14. I recommend this one highly for anyone that's in that price range. I can drink this. I've drunk it. I recommend it. I think it's a good wine for the money, for the price. It's probably the best cab West Coast that I've tasted, sub $15. So, what can I say? Now, I have this one specifically because I bought the slightly better version. Even the bottle's a little bit bigger. This is another one. Looks almost the same. Just, you know, some gold gold highlights to it but this is called vineyard collection and this is from the stone ridge vineyard this is a 2016 i've never had this 35 dollars. so a 20 dollar difference i'm gonna definitely do these on camera as a head-to-head -head tasting for sure and to see i've wanted to try some of his other expressions for sure he makes syrahs some really great syrahs 50 60 dollar wines so he makes anything from down this price point of 14 all the way to what I've seen about $100. And Charles Smith, like I said, a legit winemaker. He sold some of his, I think Velvet Devil was a Merlot he used to make, and he sold it to one of the giant brands. I try to avoid the ones that he sold just because I don't think he's involved, and I like the ones that he's involved with. So highly recommend the $14 one. I hope the $35 one's awesome. I would love to find a nice $35 wine. I've never actually seen that wine anywhere except the store I went to recently. So excited about that now i know i have a number of these so maybe i'll skip and see as we go through so i ran into this wine it was on sale sale but the sale was 60 dollars because this wine's normally about 80 so this is trilogy 2015 at a flora springs so a napa wine and i've had this once or twice once i had it as a bottle the second time i had it in a tasting and it was fantastic i knew the price has gone up exponentially to about 80 bucks, where I used to bet it for 40, and this one was about 50 or 60, I think the sale was, like 60. So I figured, what the heck, haven't had it in a long time, you know, $60 for a cab. Remember that wine just having a, a delicious factor to it, so I went with it. I'm going to keep pulling these out because I bought a bunch of a specific wine that I will absolutely talk about. Monsanto Chianti Classico Reserva 2017. So I did just say that the 2017 vintage isn't fantastically as highly rated as the 2015 and 16, but so be it. It's a good producer. It's a good price. It's in the 20s again. So I believe you get a great value. So when you talk about value wine out of Italy, Chianti Classico, especially Chianti Classico Reserva with some little extra aging requirement, uh, how many tons you can farm out of that vineyard. There's just a little bit extra, a little more alcohol, a little more unctuous there more power behind it it's a great value one so when you talk about italian great value one i know chianti's not like this oh you know but what made chianti famous was that one wine with the stick on it or something like that forget that wine or the basket it was the basket the stick wine was Montepiciano, the bruzzo the, the basket chianti these aren't that basket chianti that's massively produced these might have a big production but they're made in the right way with the rules that govern chianti classico chianti classico reservas so they're absolutely great wines Okay, so, oh, I got another Carpinetto County Classico 2016. Nothing much to say there except that I did buy a, another one. So, Jean Louis Chauve is one of the greatest Northern Rhone winemakers. He makes one of the best wines probably in the world, the His Hermitage, which is about 300 and something dollars, 350. A wine that could age 10 to 30 years, if not longer, probably longer. And he has a Jean Louis Chauve selection brand. And this wine is from St. Joseph, so mostly Syrah. 
and he calls it off for us. There's a 2018. I'm not sure on the Northern Run 2018, but he's a great producer. This is about $35. So Syrah, Northern Run, $35, made by a great producer. I'm in. Now, when we talk about bargain wines again, $21. This is his Cote de Rhone. So Southern, or it could be anywhere, but it's a, pretty sure it's a Grenache Syrah Mavedra. Pretty sure it's a Southern Rhone blend, I, I think. It, it called Cote de Rhone, I guess it could not it could be somewhere else in the Rhone. But anyway, pretty sure that's what it is. $21, and I bought four of them. This wine's awesome. At least I've had it a number of times, and I think it's awesome for the price. It may even taste better than that St. Joseph. I would have to double check. Both the same vintage, so that would be interesting to maybe try both of those on camera as well, head to head. $21. This wine's amazing. So some great, great wines that I've been buying here in that 20, 20 something dollar range. These Sangioveses, and then you got this Cote de Rhone, which is another great value, is the Cote de Rhone or Southern Rhone, the Grenache Sarama Vedra blends. They definitely taste different than Sangiovese. They most definitely taste different than Cabernet, like that CS for $14. The different flavor profiles, but all fantastic, high quality, well-made wine in that price point. I have one more wine, and I have to go grab it, so I'm going to pause it on pause. I had, it had it in the wine fridge because I didn't want it to get warm. It went from a store that I bought it from, from their cellar, laid down. Actually, it was still in the box that it was shipped from. And what is it? It is a Cabernet. And 75% Cabernet, 18% Merlot, 5 Cab Franc, 2% Petit Verdot. So technically a Bordeaux blind, 13.5% alcohol, so much lower ABV than some of these other Napa Cab. Now, this is out of, this is out of Santa Cruz Mountains, and this is Ridge's Montebello, 2014. It's the oldest vintage they had. I tried to buy the oldest vintage I had, $210 or was it $220? My birthday's coming up. I always like to buy a wine that has been on my radar for a long time. I've wanted to try the Montebello Cab forever. Supposedly a restrained style, one of the iconic wine makers in all of California. And specifically during the, the Judgment of Paris in 1976, Montebello, out of the 10 red wines, Ridges Montebello came in fifth. I think it was their 1971 vintage, if I'm not mistaken. I think they might have been the oldest vintage in the tasting of from the wines that were from California. I think there was some story to say if they showed the 72 that probably would have done better i'm not even sure that i remember exactly but they were in that judgment of paris tasting i think they're on their second winemaker since then the one the first gentleman passed i don't remember their names offhand but something i've wanted to try forever and i don't know when i will open this i'll probably do a corvin of it one day because i got it maybe around my birthday and eventually just have it later on i think these this wine is all about ageability all about finesse, all about restraint. So, so I did go through this unboxing relatively quick. I did say I was going to try that wine on camera. I do need to go grab a wine glass. I'm going to pause it yet again. Really excited about this. It's kind of one of these wish list, bucket list wines I've wanted to try forever. Very expensive, of course. So, it's now in my possession. I absolutely will be talking about this when I drink it or core of it and, and do it right you know, live, let it sit for a little bit in the glass, let it decant there naturally, and then come to it after an hour, maybe to see what happens. But this is Ridges Montebello. I'm going to grab a glass to try that Quinoa Cab. All right, grab the glass. Just going to pour a little. Hasn't had a long time to decant. It's <clears throat> young, 2018. What I remember most being very iconic about the Kunawara Cab was that it had a eucalyptus thing. Apparently in Kunawara, around those vineyards, there's a lot of eucalyptus trees, and a lot of that sometimes leaches into the grapes, supposedly. I'm not smelling that on the nose here right, right this minute. I wonder what the percentage of cab is. There's cab is on the label, so the majority is probably cab. I don't know exactly what the percentage is. It might be on the back of here. Smells good. It smells bold, for sure. I'm not sure what the ABV is on this either, but most definitely I'll do an update on it as I enjoy this over the course of the night with my steak. Good tannin, good acid, pretty dry. 
dried fruit, a lot of dried raspberry, dried cherry, dried blackberry, <laughs> instead of it being super ripe. Sometimes you get more of a ripe taste out of Australia. I'm not getting the eucalyptus yet, but I'm getting some, like a dried herb thing going too, like a, like a dried basil, a dried thyme. It's fun getting all these dried herbs and dried fruit flavors, less with the, the ripe or fresh. Which would be more indicative of an older wine and a younger wine. It, I think this just needs to open up more. I'm going to reserve judgment. It does taste good. I think it's going to pair really well with the steak just for its tannin level and its length. It has a long length. It is definitely medium plus to full bodied. I think this wine's just going to open up more and more. I feel it's a little, just maybe, maybe the word is it's a little tight still. I'm going to decant a little more. Enjoy with my steak. Definitely report back on it tomorrow and or the next time I do a video. Well, with that, good night. Go cook the steak. Pair it here. Put all these wines away. Have a good night.